Pitta Kapha Diet. This is a dual doshic diet plan for a Pitta Kapha combination. <music> Hi guys, my name is Claire and this is Claire Minded. Welcome back. I'm so stoked for you guys to be joining me. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, I would love for you guys to stay in tune and check out all the more videos that I have coming your way. But for today, we are going to be talking about the Pitta Kava diet plan. And this is going to be for dual doshic imbalances or constitutions if you're looking for extreme balance and you have a Pitta Kava flare up that you're dealing with. So before I dive into the specific foods that are going to be balancing for a Pitta Kapha combination, first I want to start at the foundational elements because this is where everything is based off of. So when you're thinking about an imbalance of any dosha for that matter, you want to bring in the opposing elements. And so when you're working with a dual dosha constitution, you need to be aware of not only one dosha's constitu um, element, elemental foundation, but you have to be also aware of the other one. So for a Pitta Kapha combination, we have to know what the elements and the qualities of those two doshas are. So Pitta, a brief recap, is made up of fire and water. So it's very hot, very sharp, very light flowing type of qualities. And then Kapha is made up of earth and water. So they have that water in common there. But the earth makes things very heavy. It makes things dense, um, just very like grounded into the earth. So when you bring Pitta and Kapha together, they have the elements that are fire, water, and earth. So when thinking about it from a foundational stance in order to balance this dual dosha constitution, you want to bring in the opposing elements. And so this includes into your diet. So what are the opposing elements of earth, water, and fire? air and ether. So you wanna be focusing on foods that are lighter, that have more air, more prana, more ether in those type of foods because those are gonna be the most balancing for this heavy, dense, hot combination that the Pitta Kapha offers. So now that we know the foundational elements and what we're seeking in balance, so we're seeking again, remember air and ether because that is the opposite of Pitta Kapha, that fire, earth, and water. So now moving into the six tastes. If you haven't checked out the video, look in the show notes because I link it below for a much more in-depth description. So breaking down the taste, we have sweet, we have sour, we have salty, bitter, astringent, and pungent. And now all of the six tastes, which I describe a lot more in the other video, has um, energies and elements to them. So bitter, for example, is made up of air and ether. One of the most balancing combinations, right, for a Pitta Kapha in balance because it has the two elements that they need. So the bitter foods are things like dark leafy greens, bitter vegetable, dandelion leaf, dandelion root, things that are just have that bittery taste. Breaking it down even simpler. So the six tastes, each dosha has three favorite tastes and three non-essential tastes. So Pitta, for example, it does great with the sweet taste, the bitter taste and the astringent taste because these will all balance pitta. Kapha, on the other hand, has a favorite of pungent, bitter, and astringent taste. And those three are balancing for kapha. So when you bring those together, you, the two that are in common are the bitter and the astringent. So these will be the two favorite tastes for a pitta kapha in balance. When you're looking to really target down your diet plan, you're gonna wanna focus on the foods that are bitter, and that are astringent because these are both bringing in that air and that ether element, making them extremely balancing for a Pitta Kapha combination. Okay, so now I'm gonna break down foods that you can actually see and implement and put them into your diet for a Pitta Kapha diet plan for you. Now remember, this list is not extensive, so don't take this as just the end game because there are so many more foods out there. This is just limited to uh, give you a starting base, okay? So remember that going into it, but use these foods as a starting point to start reincorporating these foods into your meals so you can balance that Pitta Kapha imbalance that you're working with right now. Okay, so we're gonna start with grains. These may be eaten as a cooked grain or in a yeasted bread. That would be super awesome. So some of the best grains for a Pitta Kapha diet would be barley, basmati rice, corn flour products, or rye. 
some things that you can have in a smaller amount that wouldn't be too aggravating for the pitta kapha would be amaranth, millet, quinoa, or rice, brown rice specifically. And then grains you wanna avoid would be buckwheat, oats, wheat. Next is dairy. And now while I don't recommend dairy um, pretty much at all unless you're working with a vata imbalance, that would be the only time I could find it appropriate, Dairy is super inflammatory, it, making it very aggravating for kapha, and it, it just adds a lot of uh, congestion into your body. Um, so while I don't recommend it, here are a couple of dairy products um, that you can reference if you do consume dairy. So one of the best dairy products for a pitta kapha diet plan would be skim milk. Dairy that you wanna avoid on a pitta kapha diet would be butter, buttermilk, cheeses, hard and soft, cottage cheese, cream, kefir, ice cream, whole milk, sour cream, um, frozen yogurt, anything too cold, definitely not that aggravates the agni, um, but most dairy is super inflammatory and it clogs up many channels in your body. And especially if you're dealing with a kapha imbalance, um, even if it's dual doshic, dairy would not be recommended. Moving into sweeteners. Now, sweeteners are also important not to overuse because all sweeteners in general pretty much aggravate kapha because they are sweet, they're heavy, and they're dense, and that is kapha aggravating. However, when you have this dual dosha combination, one of the best sweeteners that you can use for a pitta kapha diet would be stevia. Something you can have in a smaller amount would be fresh honey. Typically harvested within about six months would be considered fresh. Sweeteners you want to avoid, brown sugar, date sugar, grape sugar, maple syrup, molasses, rice syrup, white table sugar. Definitely no go for a pitta kapha diet plan. Next is oils. So oils are also very heavy and moist and they should generally be used in smaller amounts for a pitta kapha balancing diet plan. Um, but when choosing an oil, if you're using a little to cook or add in a dressing, one of the best oils to use for a pitta kapha balancing diet plan would be sunflower. Another oil you can have in a smaller amount would be safflower oil, but the oils you wanna avoid would be almond, avocado, castor, coconut, flaxseed, mustard, peanut, sesame. These would all be super aggravating and too heavy for a pitta kapha combination. Next is fruits. Yum! Fruits are delicious. They always tend to be light and cooling, so they're generally good for pitta kapha, but let's dive in deeper and give you more specifics. One thing to note though is that because they do contain a lot of water, any overuse or overconsumption of fruit may aggravate kapha a little bit because it is very heavy and it has a lot of water already in it. So dried fruits would tend to be a little bit better for kapha. However, when you're dealing with a dual doshik like pitta kapha, the best fruit would be apples. Those have that astringent taste. Blueberry, cranberries, blackberries, raspberries, pomegranates are super delicious. Things that you want to have smaller amounts of, apricots, cantaloupe, cherries, grapefruit, nectarines, oranges, peaches, pears, persimmons, uh, sweet pineapple, plums, tangerines, watermelons. Fruit you want to avoid, dates, figs, mangoes, papaya, a sour pineapple. These will all be a little bit too heavy and aggravating for pitta kapha combination. Oh, and definitely dried fruits are great. Dried fruits are super awesome because they're lighter, they're drier, they carry more of those air ether qualities. Dried fruit, super good for pitta kapha diet. Vegetables. So raw vegetables are awesome and amazing in the summer. A mix of raw and cooked also may be eaten for the rest of the year because this combination is just light, it's cooling, and most vegetables actually reduce both pitta and kapha, and thus should be eaten in abundance. As many vegetables as you can eat as you want, please eat all the vegetables. And like I said, you wanna focus on those dark leafy greens. So the best vegetables are gonna be things like alfalfa sprouts, Brussels sprouts, artichokes, asparagus, bean sprouts, bell peppers, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, celery, cilantro, green beans, green peppers, kale, leafy lettuce greens, lettuce, mushrooms, parsley, peas, pumpkin, sunflower sprouts, sweet peas, or turnips. 
amazing vegetables. Eat all the vegetables you can. If you want to be picky, some of the vegetables that you should be eating in smaller amounts for a pitta kapha combination would be things like beets, carrots, corn, corn on the cob, eggplant, garlic, leeks, onion, potatoes, seaweed, squash, and tomatoes. Vegetables that you would want to avoid would be things like avocados and chilies. Those are going to be too too spicy and too heavy for pitta kapha. But remember, vegetables are always delicious, so don't be too picky about the vegetables. Remember, if it's dark, if it's leafy, if it's cruciferous, um, all the vegetables are good. The only ones that could potentially cause a little aggravation, if you want to really dive in deep, would be any type of root vegetable because it's in the ground, it's heavy, it may aggravate kapha in abundance, but vegetables I would not be picky about. I, this is not where I would be fine tuning if we're talking about anywhere on the diet plan for pitta kapha. Eat vegetables in abundance. Next is nuts and seeds. So remember, we're trying to balance pitta and kapha together. So the best nuts and seeds for a pitta kapha dual doshic diet would be pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds. A couple nuts that you can have in smaller amounts would be pine nuts and sesame seeds. But some of the nuts that you want to avoid would be things like almonds, Brazil nuts, cashews, coconut, macadamia, peanuts, pecans, pistachios, walnuts. Those are all going to be a little too heavy for the pitta kapha combination. So while I personally don't advertise or advocate any meat consumption unless you're dealing with a severe vata imbalance, um, meat also tends to be super inflammatory and aggravating for the system, especially for kaffas. So for pitta kapha combination, there actually is not any meat that is best recommended because it's all going to be aggravating in some type of way. If you do consume meat and you want a couple things that you can have in smaller amounts that would be recommended for a pitta kapha combination would be things like chicken, egg whites, or freshwater fish. But definitely the meats that you want to avoid are beef, duck, egg yolk, lamb, pork, seafood, venison, turkey, legumes. So beans tend to be dry and cool, which actually makes them generally all right for a pitta kapha combination, which is super awesome because we love beans. They have tons of protein, they have tons of fiber, and they have tons of solid nutrients that can help fuel your pitta kapha imbalance. So legumes should always be soaked overnight. They should be added with spices to help with a digestion. And of all beans, tofu and mung are by far the best. And that goes for pretty much any dosha um, combination. Mung is just super balancing for all. Some legumes that you can have in a smaller amount would be chickpeas, lentil, peanuts, and tempeh. There's not really any major legumes that you should be avoiding on a pitta kapha diet. So just choose your favorite, but make sure they're soaked overnight and you add digestive spices to help aid in digestion as well as absorption properly. So spices are delicious. They aid in digestion and absorption of nutrients as well as they just improve the flavor. So they're delicious. And for pitta kapha individuals, generally you want to feel warm, mild, moderate type spicing. So you basically don't want the spices to be too hot, in which case they aggravate pitta because you remember you want to be balancing pitta and kapha. So you want to be consuming lighter digestive spices, things that are moderately spiced, slightly warm, um, but definitely not, you know, too hot. That'll be aggravating. So the best spices for a pitta kapha diet plan would be cardamom, catnip, chamomile, coriander, cumin, curry leaves, fennel, peppermint, saffron, spearmint, turmeric. These are all super delicious and balancing for pitta kapha. Other spices that are more recommended in smaller amounts would be allspice, basil, basil, bay leaves, caraway, dill, fenugreek, fresh ginger, oregano, paprika, parsley, poppy seed, rosemary, sage, and thyme. Some of the spices that you would want to avoid maybe consuming on a very rare occasion would be those that are super, super pungent. So spices like black pepper, cayenne pepper, celery seed, raw garlic, dry ginger because dry ginger is a lot more potent and pungent than fresh ginger, mustards, and salt. So those 
Again, you might have considering using those in smaller amounts on a rare occasion, but try not to make them your everyday thing if you're dealing with a pitta kapha imbalance because they are more aggravating. For condiments, again, pitta and kapha don't do too great with condiments because a lot of them carry just sweet, heavy qualities, which is aggravating. So if there's not any condiments that are best suited for pitta kapha, but, but a smaller amount type of condiment that you can have more regularly, semi-regularly would be carob. But some of the condiments that you would want to avoid would be ketchup, chocolate, mayonnaise, and vinegar. These are going to be more aggravating for the pitta kapha diet. And lastly is beverages. And remember, taken at room temperature. Green vegetable juices. Remember, dark leafy greens are a major hit for pitta kapha diets. Also teas. Chamomile, mint, spiced teas, lightly spiced teas, a water, water with a little lemon also works as well. Sparkling water with no added sugar. Beverages you want to avoid, alcohol, black tea, coffee, fruit juices that are heavily sweetened. So all those ones in the supermarket, unless it's fresh pressed, please pass. Soft drinks, soda pop, and extremely pungent teas. So this was all about the Pitta Kapha diet plan to cure imbalances of a dual dosha constitution. So remember, when you're working with dual doshas, you have to look at both of them at play and see the common denominators. So Pitta Kapha, they have earth, fire, and water elements. So you need the opposing elements, air and ether. And you can find those in the foods that I listed here. So some of the best foods, all of those legumes, the dark leafy greens, the vegetables, these all carry more air and more ether qualities, which will be balancing for Pitta and Kapha. If you guys have any other questions about this video or any other of the diet plan videos that I have, please drop it in the show notes below. I would love to connect with you guys further. Um, if anyone's looking for a further dive into Ayurveda, please reach out as I do take on clients one-on-one. -on -one, so I would love to connect and help you guys bring yourself back to balance. Again, my name is Claire and this is Claire Minded. I'm so stoked to be traveling along this journey with you guys. So thank you for tuning in.